Good morning! Welcome to Sabbath School with Miss Lana. Today we're going to start a new section if you get the uh, primary Gracelink quarterlies. We're now doing some stories from uh, the traveling in the wilderness uh, with Moses and the Israelites. And so today's lesson is going to come from Genesis 16. But first, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your love and care for us and help us to remember that you care for us and that you like to be asked um, and help us to trust that you are always there for us and I ask that you go with us this week and go with us today as we learn a little bit more about you and your power and your love. Amen. We're going to sing, God is so good. God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me. Because this is a story about when God was very, very good to the Israelites for a very long time, too. So... Get your piece of paper, split it into four parts, make sure you have something to draw with, have your Bible if you would like to follow along, and let's get started. This week's lesson is in Exodus 16, and we're going to start out reading verses 1 through 9. Then the whole Israelite community left Elam. They came to the desert of Sin. This place was between Elam and Sinai. They came to this place on the 15th day of the second month after they had left Egypt. Then the whole Israelite community grumbled to Moses and Aaron in the desert. The Israelites said to them, It would have been better if the Lord had killed us in the land of Egypt. There we had meat to eat. We had all the food we wanted. But you have brought us into this desert. You will starve us to death here. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will cause food to fall like rain from the sky. This food will be for all of you. Every day the people must go out and gather what they need for that day. I will do this to see if the people will do what I teach them. On the sixth day of each week they are to gather twice as much as they gather on other days. Then they are to prepare it. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, this evening you will know that the Lord is the one who brought you out of Egypt. Tomorrow morning you will see the greatness of the Lord. He has heard you grumble against him. We are nothing. You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. And Moses said, Each evening the Lord will give you meat to eat, and every morning he will give you all the bread you want. He will do this because he has heard you grumble against him. You are not grumbling against Aaron and me. You are grumbling against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Speak to the whole community of the Israelites. Say to them, Meet together in front of the Lord, because he has heard your grumblings. Okay, so at the beginning it said, This is the 15th day of the second month after they left Egypt. So they left Egypt, and they've been traveling for about a month and a half. And now, it didn't say they were out of food. It said they were grumbling. They're grumbling and they're worried they're going to starve in the desert. Okay, they're probably running low on food because they've been traveling a while. But I want you to notice, did you ever hear that they prayed or asked God? He's right there in that cloud. And I didn't see anywhere in there that they went and asked God for food. They just started grumbling. Grumbling about starving in the wilderness. So, I'm drawing my people here. They don't have happy faces because they're grumbling and maybe their tummies are grumbling or at least they're worried their tummies are gonna grumble and they're not happy. They're frustrated. They're grumbly. All right, so let's see what God says now. Like he told Moses, what he's going to do. And now they're gathering the congregation up. <clears throat> and so we're going to read. And so Aaron's going to talk to them. Um, and we're going to read verses 10 through 18. 
So Aaron spoke to the whole community of the Israelites. While he was speaking, they looked toward the desert. There the greatness of the Lord appeared in a cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumblings of the people of Israel. So tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and every morning you will eat all the bread you want. Then you will know I am the Lord your God. That evening quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost were on the desert ground. When the Israelites saw it, they asked each other, What is that? They asked this question because they did not know what it was. So Moses told them, This is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. The Lord has commanded, Each one of you must gather what he needs. Gather about two quarts for every person in your family. So the people of Israel did this. Some people gathered much and some gathered little. Then they measured it. The person who gathered more did not have too much. The person who gathered less did not have too little. Each person had gathered just as much as he needed. All right, so in response to their concerns about food, God said two things. He said, tonight you're going to have quail. So it's not going to look exactly like quail, but there we go. It's got the top knot. That makes it quail. All right. They're going to get quail and manna. And they had to go out and gather the manna. And I don't have white for making it white, but so we're going to make it blue. And they were each supposed to gather about two quarts. And that was enough for the day. All right. So God sent quail that evening. And then he sent manna, and he sent manna every morning. There were special rules about the manna and about gathering it. And so we're going to read some of those. We're going to read from verse 19 to 30. Moses said to them, don't keep any of it to eat the next day. But some of the people did not listen to Moses. They kept part of it to eat the next morning. But it became full of worms and began to stink. So Moses was angry with these people. Every morning, each person gathered as much as he needed. But when the sun became hot, it melted away. On the sixth day, the people gathered twice as much food. They gathered four quarts for every person. So all the leaders of the community came and told this to Moses. Moses said to them, This is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow is the Sabbath, the Lord's holy day of rest. Bake what you want to bake, and boil what you want to boil today, but save the rest of the food until tomorrow morning. So the people saved it until the next day, as Moses had commanded, and none of it began to stink or have worms in it. Moses told the people, Eat the food you gathered yesterday. Today is a Sabbath, the Lord's day of rest, so you will not find any out in the field today. You should gather the food for six days, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day. On that day, there will not be any food on the ground. On the seventh day, some of the people went out to gather food, but they couldn't find any. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will all you people refuse to obey my commands and teachings? Look, the Lord has made the Sabbath a day of rest for all of you. So on the sixth day, he will give you enough food for two days. But on the Sabbath, each of you must stay where you are. Do not leave your house. So the people rested on the Sabbath. All right, so Sunday through Friday, if they tried to have leftovers, if they didn't want to get up early and they saved it, it got worms in it and it began to stink. Okay? You didn't want it if you had done it on that day. Here, right, let's add some worms. Okay. So if you tried, put our person here. If you tried to save it, here, it's gonna stink. He's got his uh, 
clip on his nose because it stinks. All right, it doesn't look yummy anymore. That was Sunday through Friday. If you try to save it, you are not gonna be happy with the results. If you sleep in, you're gonna miss out because there's not gonna be any left outside and yours is gonna have gone bad. But Friday, they could save it for Sabbath and it wouldn't go bad. God was teaching them about Sabbath. If you flip through a couple more pages, you'll find a little later there's the Ten Commandments with remember the Sabbath day. And it says remember for a reason because this is not the first time, the Ten Commandments is not the first time they've had the Sabbath. The Sabbath was instituted at creation and here God is teaching it to them again because they had been slaves Saturday or Sabbath. They had been slaves. When they were slaves, they couldn't just take Sabbaths off. And so now God is teaching them again the importance of the Sabbath, that the Sabbath's important to him, and that, hey, you get a day off. Enjoy it. Enjoy your day off. You don't need to go out and search for manna. All right, let's finish the chapter. Exodus chapter 16, verses 31 to 36. The people of Israel called the food manna. The manna was like small white seeds. It tasted like wafers made with honey. Then Moses said, The Lord said, Save two quarts of this food for your descendants. Then they can see the food I gave you to eat. I did this in the desert when I brought you out of Egypt. Moses told Aaron, Take a jar and fill it with two quarts of manna, and save this manna for your descendants. So Aaron did what the Lord had commanded Moses. Aaron put the jar of manna in front of the Ark of the Covenant. He did this so it could be kept. The Israelites ate manna for 40 years. They ate it until they came to the land where they settled. They ate manna until they came to the edge of the land of Canaan. The measure they used for the manna was two quarts. It was one-tenth of an ephah. All right. So God did not let them go hungry. He did not let them starve. He fed them manna every single day. Okay. But I want to lid on this one because this is the one that's saved here. Okay. Something like, something like this. Okay. This is our jar. Our jar with the two quarts that are saved for posterity, saved for the descendants to see that God fed his people for 40 years in the desert. Because they were always moving through the wilderness, they couldn't grow food. And eating their livestock wouldn't have lasted them the whole 40 years. So for 40 years, God fed them and took care of them in the desert. So, started out, they grumbled. They felt like they weren't going to have enough food. They were going to starve and die in the wilderness. They should have just stayed in Egypt. Grumble, 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 grumble. They didn't go ask God. They just started grumbling. God sent them quail, and then he sent them manna. Two quarts per person each day. They had to go gather it, but he sent enough for all of them. He taught them. He used it to teach them a lesson. For 40 years, they had a reminder of the Sabbath every single week that they couldn't save it any other day of the week. But they could save it for Sabbath, and then they could rest Sabbath. They didn't have to go out and gather. They could sleep in, and they could eat their manna. All right, so for 40 years, they had a lesson teaching them that the Sabbath matters to God. And like I said, he fed them for 40 years until they reached the land of Canaan and were able to eat the produce that grew there, those giant grapes and everything else. And just like God took care of them, He'll take care of you and me, too, with whatever craziness comes our way. All right, your challenge for this week is to be a blessing to some graduates. We have people graduating, and they don't get to have a normal graduation. I imagine you have friends or relatives who are graduating. They could be graduating from kindergarten, could be graduating from eighth grade, from high school, from college. 
from technical school, from whatever. Figure out someone you know who is graduating this year and do something to brighten their day. Send them a card, um, draw them a picture, make them a present. Figure something out and that's my challenge to you this week. Do something to brighten a graduate's day this week. Let's close with prayer. Dear God, thank you for this Sabbath day. Thank you for uh, your Sabbath object lesson of the manna and also that it shows your providence that you care for us and, uh, and help us to remember to ask you for what we need and then to say thank you when you provide abundantly for us. And uh, go with each of us this week. Help us to see your work in our lives. Amen. Bye.